Then all you do here is you like take the self view and then take it off. So that just takes off the form. And then once that starts up, it should be good. Cool. Now we need to put the charger in here. Check the Zoom side. Morning, 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 guys. Where's Catherine? Is she being lazy? Is she supposed to be doing this too? <laughs> we carpool too. Yeah, we carpool yeah. here. So. Okay. Have you seen Drew yet? I have no. not. Here, because he usually texts and says that he's here. I just got one from you, yeah. Oh, the white coat thing. Oh, yeah, I did. Everything's going to do. Cool.
Is it what you see? Is it like, whoa, sorry, like, you can't get away with that. Exactly what I said. The only one you got is that We have to leave it back up for a second, though. Some hot breakfast. Nice.
know what Clarissa and I had talked about? If you ever, if you and Kelly need like a date night or a night off or anything. Oh, you too. Just let us know. We actually, we also talked about it. Yeah, we, we both need some time off. Well, it's one yeah, of those things that like, we don't always do a great job of like, yeah. at least from our side, because me, me and Clarissa know this, like, we don't always do a great job of like self care. Yeah, no. And so I think it's one of the most important things that we can do. Yeah, to, Kelly actually, we just talked about that. It's kind of like we, like I've been actually biking a lot. Yeah, I actually have more fit right now than I was. I really am. Like I, like just because of biking every day, mm -hmm. like I feel a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it's such a great funny, time. interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it was just so non conducive for self care. Anyways, but the, uh, yeah, but overall, it's just like we're trying to turn the page here with the fellowship. It's like, okay. like this, you're also trying to treat it like, like, okay, like this is my job now. Like, mm -hmm. it, like trying to get used to, like, how are we going to function? Like, exactly. Do life. Yeah, So like I, I unless, know I unless we're, we're put, like unless we like work decide like hey we're but for function let's do some email nope. yeah no but exactly so even now it is residency was like mm -hmm. way better read you thought residency was better I don't know I think way more. oh I was just saying so I thought residency was a thousand times more challenging yeah, and like thirty hours like. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the distancing. Like, I, had, I got yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of exposure, a lot of experience, um, and I really appreciate it. But it definitely felt that um, yeah. I used to have qualms about my food. Oh, yeah. Grab all the food. Um, so I think that like I loved I loved my time in, in residency. Like I thought that it was yeah, yeah. an amazing opportunity. Um, um, I thought it was an amazing opportunity and I was pretty sure. I completely agree. The hours that you just get crushed sometimes. It's just or not kind of smart, man. Like, just. Because, like, I don't know about you, like, I always pushed, like, pretty yeah, I mean, close oh, to like, the I was 60 or the 80 hour work over. And, like, I was always, like, right there, like, right on the hovering, like, aspect of it, which is it's fine. Like, you're, it's a season, right? You do it. The yeah. reason that you're in residency for three no, five years. No, you're I'm exposed, years. and like there are patients that I'm like, no, I gotta see like what this procedure's gonna be about. Like you got your PICU shift or whatever, NICU, mm -hmm. and they're about to go get scoped. So, what are you doing? Did you guys get all that set up? That's right. I didn't. They did. Uh, and, uh, no. Thank you. What is that? I was pouring. Oh, it's my, it's my coffee. I don't have coffee. It's just. Coffee. Oh, I was yeah, like, that's yeah, so yeah. confusing. I thought that was like one of those like fake, like you know, oh, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. the fake can things. And I was like, that is like the most Dude, realistic one you can It's time in the morning. I thought it was like the most realistic thing. I was like, man, that looks exactly like a Coke can. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a yeah. Because it is. Right. Yeah. These things, these yetis are amazing. Oh, they're yeah. so good. Yeah. They keep it cold for so long. Yeah. yeah. Zoom's working. You are awesome. Thank you for doing all that. Uh, you have some mail over there. Exciting. The riveting mail. I can't wait. I can't wait to open it. It's Christmas. Good morning. Every time. Every time. Did you guys have fun in Portland? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I miss. Okay. Uh, I was Dallas out. It was good. It was good. Saturday night. You guys just got to bed early. We're boring. We've got. I have a yeah, nine-month-old no, children. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're like you like doing like, like the prayerful like. Uh, There's a go to bed quickly. Go to bed quickly. Go to bed now. <laughs> you know, like he falls asleep at like not well when we were there he was staying up until like eleven o'clock and uh, so it was like the second that he goes down you're like just fall asleep yeah and it's a hotel it's all exciting yeah. you know fun they're both like how old uh, yeah I have a six year old yeah he's got five he's got three year old he's got oh, the older kiddos yeah, man so how old's yours. Nine months. Nine months. Yeah. So he, he was he turned nine months while we were in Portland. Oh. Yeah. They take him to Voodoo Donuts and Yeah, they, they actually went around. They went to what was it, Washington Park, uh -huh. the um the Arboretum. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Arboretum, like, yeah. the, the Rose Garden, yeah. 
the Children's Museum. Um, oh, the Children's Museum's great. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great town. It's yeah. a little bit like we wish that we had, like he was a little bit older. Yeah. Um, he's like a nine month old, he can't appreciate all of it, but it was, it was a pretty cool time. Yeah, we used to go down, we used to take the train down every year. There's a train that goes yeah. over there? Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 Um, that wasn't the train that you had taken, right? No, I took the west. Okay. We, I had mm -hmm. stayed at Airbnb on Beaverton, so I oh. took it in to town. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. And um, well, there's the Cascade Amtrak. It's like, it goes right up against the water, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Like through Olympia and everything. Yeah. It's all, yeah, it's great. But, uh, okay. Sorry. yeah, Portland's a good town for kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just wait, you have the OMSI at some time. OMSI, which is the, like the science museum. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, right. it's on the river. Cool. Ooh, a little submarine you can go in. And, oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. My kids are 23 and 21, so it's... <laughs> so they're like the perfect age yeah, to go there. Right, right. exactly. Let's go to the Children's Museum. <laughs> that's been a long time since we've been there, though. <sighs> no, it was uh, somebody from Eugene. Mm. He does one of these. Yeah. Like, remember, was it Joe Flacco who got him a couple years ago who did all those, but like, he wasn't knocked out completely. Mason was off the, like, back of the stairs now. Um, the burgers out. Um, he just got hit and then just put him down. Flacco, like, did the move. Did you not see the plane? There's a lady around. Remember, he did the picture so, oh, yeah. in, and he did one of these, and the world was screaming. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like, on my yeah, I was like, fumbled right. the ball in his right. way. Right. And they were trying to first touch down, and like, the poor yeah. guy, he's like, yeah. out cold, and we just like, did a cheer. Yeah, they're like, it's for the blue. Right. Yeah. And people are like, please not. Yeah, I know. So embarrassing. Yeah, I know. 
Because I could take so care of that family. Yesterday, that family was yeah. at yeah. the yeah. um, yeah. I was like asking all the kids like, what sports like, they do and whatnot. And they were like all playing football. And like at first, my mom was the only one there. The dad came later. Um, and apparently, dad's like really into football. And whatever. I was like talking with the mom about football a little bit. And like this is having side conversations with the kids and stuff. I think I literally was like asking them about like that. They clearly were like a big football family. So I was like, did you see this kid? Like that will instantaneously make you never want to have your children like that. Yep. Yeah, I've been in front of people. Why was it a secret? Maybe it's... <gasps> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe this is maybe going to get a message. In the beginning, it was very, like... No. I'm like, but then I get... Someone, oh, I was reminding okay. people that yeah. this is happening. Yeah. 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 yeah, it is. I love how you actually... This person stopped. Looked on people's lives. And then it's like... These? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and then yesterday. Yeah. Of course. You look at them before. I know. Which is really cool. You're hilarious. I, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. It's a new indication. I know. Oh. But no. No. <laughs> Not that Zoller can use it, but you're the So if he has a page, right. call you. Yeah, so Zoller's a great job. Like, we can use uh, it for everything. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's and I was just like, we want that. So are you in Seattle? Yeah, I'm doing so. Hmm? Oh, oh, my slide slightly changed. Uh-oh. It's funny how when you go over it for like the 10,000th time that you catch typos and... Uh, are we open and running for, or for since you guys actually got here? What? Are we up and running or? Yeah. Oh, okay. The mic is guys. Yeah. I'm not the used to like getting here. Yeah. Everything's ready. Yeah. yeah. She's our new. I think they may have actually fixed the system slightly because last time literally it was like. Drew can probably tell you. Uh, we would do everything and, right. It would be. Like, so she starts renting at the end of the month. My talk will be uh, a chaos order apparently. And tram so, is back. Not, oh, oh, cool. yeah. so you're gonna build the chalkboard. Build the chalkboard. Um, the how do I log? I need to log into mine. She's finally got me. I think everyone's a little confused. You not log out? Yeah. She's um, creating. Can I? I log out? Can 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 I log out? I would assume so. Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even match your house off it. I'm just not awake. I can't. I should have yeah, You can't. Can. I can't. <laughs> yeah, in the right way. Yeah. 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 Let me do yeah, this yeah. first so I'm not logged into his yeah. email yeah. account. That's and then, like, great. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. I know. I feel like you should have said, I feel like we need to be more. I don't know. I just, you know, I don't know why we didn't find it because there are no other people. I just need to be like, okay. And I realized. We didn't actually go in two trucks. We oh, yeah. we just went to other restaurants. So, like, I go to so many other ones. So we still found a place in that Oh, it's still okay. like yeah. locked in as him. Good end of the night. Is it? Um, yeah, it was good. You didn't do like Alpha? Yeah. Are you closed? Did you close them? Uh, yeah. I did. I did. I did. Okay, so you know what? Let me just eat out. What do you think of it? Was it hot? You're right. My house. Cool. <laughs> Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just Hello. I'm thinking yes. of. Okay, continue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Try yeah. to make myself. One more day. Oh, I got told you. No, it's like. Okay, and then. Oh, right, because I'm flying all the way. Like the whole class. Seven of Well, because I need to drop off. What does that mean? Everybody's. Yeah, I told him that he was texting me at like 7 something on Sunday night. He was like, we are, we're like three hours still from home. I'm just like, I'm green because your mother made us go well, on we some like to national park road. <laughs> and I was like, this is why whenever mom wants to go on these little random detours when we're on road trips, and she goes on her pouty face when I say no. I've never been out of the city in New York, and Portland is like the most magical city ever. Like, I never been out of the city in New York. Uh, Actually, uh, because he, get, he and I both get very car sick. We went to, uh, if we aren't going to drive or in the front, oh, yeah. we can't see every single which way. 
Apparently they were on a really bumpy, single lane road that was curving all the way. Okay. Driving. Me, like, no. yeah, never so so he was still sick like, yesterday. I've gone, I've given up yeah. my home. I really was sick of that. I'm interested in still driving until yeah. days. Give it a go. Mm -hmm. well, I was honestly, honestly doesn't sound like he was driving. Like I don't know how, it must have been that out of the road and he got sick. Because he said it was like a 50 mile year. Yeah. My mom like loves crazy adventures like in hand lighting and she has like stomach. Your mom is really funny. I, I, I do love, enjoy your mom. She's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I love her too. I really like it. I bet I can't do However, she's a part of the avocado. Oh, I can send it here. Oh, yeah. Which is really weird because right earlier like I signed out. Okay. I think he's trying to give it to me. No, it like didn't send out an out. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. This is amazing. No, not yet. Jaw dropping Just please do it. Or I'll just it Yeah, okay. Actually, that I'll do. Yeah. Because that is what I'm trying. Because then you feel like it's not really getting So I'm just going to get it. 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 Opens emails. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do at 8 a.m. every morning. It's really sad. Holy crap. <laughs> I get to work and so I can get all my done. I only have four in my inbox at any given I know. Like, I have to like check them and delete them. Because yeah, I know. Even, even if they have significance, I have to delete them. I know. Oh, okay. Fine. How it how makes me feel better. Feel better. <laughs> it's like I did something today, guys. I deleted some emails. Even if I delete them later, I still delete them. You can search them. Oh my god. Oh my god. You can, but the deleted actually empties. Why can you share like? The, the emptied actually like. Well, he's a pulmonary doctor, but the search is He had to go to Arizona. Oh, really? Oh, mm. oh. Um, yeah. it's his um, HR. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Um, and what's the title of it? I think it's 60 Oh, yeah. So he got it in Arizona? Two of them, and they went really well. Oh, great. Yeah, so I thought of you, and he's like the happier I've happiest oh, ever seen him. I mean, very, very, he got very, very young ones, is what they said. And like really young, a male. Yeah. And I'm like, you're like he's a different, like he is ready to go. Okay. So I'm like now he's gonna outlive us all. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. That's great. Anyway. Good. I think it's just like, like you don't have to sit. Just, just, thank you. Yeah. So just like make my contact picture. No. I don't know.
weekend uh, was the uh, Northwest Allergy Forum. I think we're good, yeah. Down in, uh, in Portland. There was one speaker I found particularly interesting, a guy from, he's in Colorado now, uh, who's got both an MBA and an MD, and he, he gave a talk about difficult subject to talk about medical economics and the value of um, things that we do. One of the particular things I found interesting, I can't tell you how he did this economic calculation, but what the price of an epinephrine injector should be based on its value, if you will, to society and calculated at 24 bucks as opposed to the absurd pricing and 
just as I, I told him I wanted to invite him next year to address those kind of issues and other broader contexts of things that we do, the value of, I mean, you know, his whole thing was that, of course, every kid has to have their own epinephrine injector, every school demands it, even though 99% of them go to waste and never get used and get thrown away. Uh, the policies that we set because of, uh, you know, fearful parents, fearful society. I was going to ask them, um, you know, how many kids die at school from peanut ingestion versus how many die from guns? And the response to dying from peanuts is that there should be more epinephrine injectors in every school. Um, the response should be there should be more guns in every school as well. Anyway, this is some <laughs> philosophical meandering on my part, uh, which may not make any sense to the rest of you. But um, so he's going to be a speaker next year. Uh, today's talk's more fundamental to what we do. Um, Alice is going to talk about the spectrum of mastocytosis. Alright guys, I'm Ellie Chow, you guys all know me, I am one of the fellows at UW. Today I'm talking about mast cell syndrome, the spectrum disorder, as well as tryptosemias. I've been reminded to speak louder and slower, so please let me know if I see it all too quickly. I have no disclosures. So I'm presenting three real cases, the first of which is a 50-year-old man. He has a history of osteoporosis. He is hospitalized for a GI bleed, and incidentally, while turning in bed, he sustained a spinal cord injury from a pathological fracture. As such, a trip taste was actually sent, and it was greater than 90. <clears throat> My second case is a 42-year-old woman. She has recurrent episodes of flushing, urticaria, intradema, pariahs, recurrent anaphylaxis. These are frequently triggered by strong scents, she says. She also has recurrent crabby abdominal pain and diarrhea, and this is triggered by many foods. However, she also has alopecia totalis. What's interesting is, is that all her allergy testing has been negative by both skin prick and immunoprops. So she underwent a bone marrow biopsy, she did not have increased mast cell clonality, or mast cells or clonality, I apologize. Her baseline was uh, tryptosis 4, and in an acute episode, it went up to 11. So what's interesting is then she got a full gamut of antihistamines, both H1 and H2, at high doses, um, leukotriene, receptor antagonist, chromosome sodium, mast cell stabilizer, as well as omalizumab as a mast cell stabilizer, and actually had near resolution of all her symptoms, including the alopecia to towers. The third case is a 16-year-old young man. He was previously healthy, but then he started developing episodes of sneezing, bilateral eyelid, androedema, as well as recurrent urticaria. And then, twice while, well, after running uh, cross-country, uh, minutes later, he had recurrent anaphylaxis characterized by sneezing, puffy eyes, nasal con congestion, lip, tongue, and throat swelling. And at first, it was thought, okay, maybe there was some food ingestion or maybe something else that he was allergic to. And then it happened while he was playing a video game, and then the history became much more interesting, or severe, I should say. Um, again, like the second case, all his environmental and uh, food skin prick testing immunocaps were negative. His baseline trip taste was mildly elevated at 12.2, and unfortunately, we do not have a symptomatic value. So, mast cell disease uh, ranges over a very large spectrum. It uh, ranges from systemic mastocytosis, as well as cutaneous mastocytosis, to mast cell activation disorders, um, including the mono 
clonal mast cell activation syndrome, secondary mast cell activation disorders, idiopathic mast cell, and now the uh, hereditary alpha tryptosemia has been discovered a couple of years ago. Much more discussion has been included with regards to HAT um, whenever we speak of patients with elevated tryptase levels. Can you tell us why the second patient had alopecia? It was part of her, um, um, like mast cell presentation. It only gets results after we started on the Well, I don't understand the relationship. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> we are befuddled to this day. All right. So a little history about mast cell and their associated diseases. Um, it was first described in 1878. And what's interesting is actually uh, urticaria parentosa was described in the literature in 1869 prior, but they didn't know what it was caused by. It wasn't until 1931 that Webb um, looked at rat peritoneal mast cells, irritated them with egg whites, and just was able to describe a degranulation of these mast cells. <clears throat> Following, um, it was noted that histamine and heparin were released together in anaphylactic shock. In 1952, Riley and West was able to determine that the mast cells could actually carry both the histamine and the heparin. The landmark discovery by the Ishizakas in uh, 1967 of IgE then led to further discoveries that um, IgE actually mediates a histamine release from mast cells. Um, back in 1894, Una described mast cells that actually were observed below um, skin with urticaria pigmentosa. And then in 1949 was the first time an autopsy of a one-year-old with fatal mast cell disease was described. So mast cells actually are interesting because they come from a myelinated lineage and for a long time there was much debate about what kind of cells they uh, descended from. They are the only myelinated lineage where the mature uh, forms of these cells do not circulate and are long-lived with uh, limited proliferation. They are found, as we previously discussed, in mucosa and epithelial tissues. They are highly involved in many different systemic processes. Um, there's the male mouse, such as vesitilitation, homeostasis of both uh, vasculature and lung physiology, um, indeed adaptive immune responses to bacteria and parasites, intradenesis, venom detoxification, bone growth remodeling, and most recently there's been development of an area looking at cardiac hypoxia during coronary artery disease. So just to elucidate, discuss a little further with regards to its multiple properties and actions. So it's um, with intragenesis, it actually produces VEGF uh, and all these other growth factors, as well as IL-8 proteases and heparin and histamine. And then it uh, is able to act on itself and other cells to poten potentiate angiogenesis. With the gross innate immunity, it, the antigen actually will bind to the cell itself, as well as to TLR for gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, as well as the complement. Um, by doing this, it recruits eosinophils, NK cells and neutrophils. So, and then it also produces cathelicidins, defenses, and cytins. In the viral response, it, it can recruit CD8s uh, via interferon alpha and beta release. And then it can also recruit CTLs via TNF alpha release. In the adaptive immunity, it plays a part in both MHC1 and 2 presentation uh, with uh, single strand RNA. Um, detection with TLR7, as Anya spoke about last week, uh, these mast cells will release IL-1 and TNF-alpha, which then further attracts um, dendritic cells to the skin and lymph nodes. With antiparasitics, interesting, is more of a mechanistic uh, physiological response to the histamine that allows for antiparasitic action, and it basically include, induces coughing as well as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. So a little bit on how this works with regards to mast cell related disease is um, it's highly dependent on the CK receptor for its growth and proliferation. So um, the stem cell factor is a protein that uh, is produced by tissue stromal cells, uh, particularly fibroblasts. 
It's a critical cytokine involved in mast cell growth, differentiation, and survival. In fact, without uh, C SCF uh, stimulation, mast cells will actually grow, sorry, uh, die in vitro. Um, it promotes mast cell adhesion, migration, proliferation, and then it also enhances Ig mediated mast cell degranulation. It's a, um, about kit a little bit. It's a transmembrane receptor for SCF. It's encoded by CKIT, and greater than 90% of adults with gain of function at D816V in XM7 have um, this mutation. It's a member of the tyrosine kinase family of growth uh, receptors. It's expressed on multiple kinds of hemopoietin cells, not just mast cells. <clears throat> so it should also be noted that there's um, other secret mutations that consist of under 1% of patients with mast cell issues, um, include other loci at, of um, KIT, many of which actually are within the catalytic domain, like um, 816. And um, there's probably some involvement of downstream drag stat that's still being elucidated. Also, if the patient has an acidophilia, um, they have it's been found that they can have the fit one l one PDGFRB uh, fusion oncogene instead of uh, mutation at kit. Good question. Yes, sir. Why does it have that name? What does C kit mean? And if it's abnormal on mast cells, is it abnormal on every cell that, that expresses it? I guess it would have to be. And so, what's the implication that it's abnormal on other cells? I actually didn't see what the kit stood for. Um, the C is usually a nomenclature for like C, <coughs> these growth uh, factor kind or growth related um, uh, receptors. And then with regards to a lot of these are actually um, somatic mutations, they're not germline, which is why the patients develop the, the issues down the line and it's typically um, a, a mutation that occurs within the bone marrow. So it can, it can be normal on other cell lines and just have normal yes. mast cell precursors. Right. Anybody know what, what C kit means? He makes up the name. That's a great question. <laughs> um, all right. So basically, um, kit homodimerizes upon binding SCF from ribobloss. Um, Basically, there's a catalytic domain with uh, ATP uh, binding sites that interact with structural proteins that hence um, interact with the RAS, RAF, ERK, MEC pathway, and as well as um, with the Stark family kinases. <clears throat> so imatinib or Gleevec actually binds at the ATP binding site. And then just to discuss D18B, um, this mutation actually com causes a conformational change in the ATP binding site, such that it causes constitutive um, activation of KIT. So a little bit about tryptase. Um, tryptase is coded by, okay, there's apparently four genes for tryptase. Unfortunately, we think that uh, TPSAB2 gene encodes beta tryptase, and that TPSAB1 encodes alpha or beta tryptase. You inherit one copy from each parent. So there's only one copy per allele. They are produced by mast cells and under 1% of them uh, of tryptase is produced by basophils. It's formed initially as a pre-tryptase that becomes um, cleaved into a pro-tryptase. Then there's one form that is constitutively secreted at baseline. And this is actually what is usually elevated at all times in patients with mast cell disease. And then in an acute setting, this other form is uh, released. The other form of protease is uh, becomes a mature protein that forms tetramers in an acidic environment and stabilized by bound proteoglycan heparin. Evidently, homotetramers of beta tryptase are active proteases. The commercial tryptase assay 
um, actually looks at the total amount of tryptase in the blood, both the protryptase that is released at a basal level, as well as the active mature form that we see upon um, episodic release. The literature has now established that uh, elevated basal serum tryptase level is considered to be greater than 11.4, and this evidently is um, prominent in the population at 46%. You know, some years ago, there used to be available different assays for alpha and beta, mm -hmm. and I don't remember it very well, but there was some diagnostic value in measuring one or the other. That seems to have fallen away. We just measure total triple right. net. Why is that happening? Um, there actually wasn't a good rationale that was presented in the literature. Basically, they were the. It seemed like uh, the interest is to see what the total amount was. Just for prognostic value, because it doesn't seem like there really is an independent function between the alpha and the beta. They're both active? They're both active. Yes, sir. So does that number of five, four to six percent indicate that the, the interval needs to be changed, or does that mean there's that much disease out there with elevated tryptase? That's a great question. Another one, no answer. Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, clonal mouse cell disorders has a very large spectrum. Um, they you have skin involvement with pruritus, flushing, hives, GI, nausea, vomiting, constipation, sorry, diarrhea, bowel <coughs> pain, cramps, heartburn, cardiovascular with vasodilatory symptoms of syncope, dizziness, palpitations, neurologic. People talk about brain fog. Uh, they have depression, headache, issues with sleep. Clearly, they have issues with anaphylaxis, lots, lots of times idiopathic. Uh, and this can be propagated by venom, drugs, or food oh. <clears throat> as instigators. You know, osteoporosis with pathologic fractures, bone pain. Um, you can have lots of constitutional issues with weakness, fatigue, arthrologists, myalgias. So the big thing is, is that you have to evaluate for organopathy um due to mast cell infiltration such as lymphadenopathy hepatomegaly splenomegaly and so as well as um osteolytic lesions the differential for these sim symptoms are very very wide including carcinoid hereditary angioedema medullary thyroid cancer pheochromocytoma vip secreting tumor and zoelandra adolescent syndrome however markedly in none of these uh, syndromes do we see in elevated tryptase. Symptoms can be triggered by medications, physical stimulation, as little as clapping, surgical procedures, infections, alcohol, emotional stress, and hyponopterostings. So this brings me to talk about a very new receptor that was recently described in literature approximately three years ago um, in a nature paper. Um, four years ago, actually, 2015. Um, it's the mass-related G protein coupled receptor, X2, or the MRGP or X2. It is um, expressed at high levels in mast cells in both the skin and synovium, and it is activated by cationic and philic substances, some of which are still under debate, such as ionated contrast agents. However, this is the theory for why insect venom with the homoptera from Mastoparin, as well as the polystes, polystes kinin, uh, can cause uh, anaphylaxis, as well as vancomycin with Redman syndrome. Recently, scientific reports had a paper published by Naveen Fair et al. that discussed looking at NRGPRX2 um, in mast cell response to procedures as or paired out with agents such as um, contrast dye versus anesthetics, um, opiates. And basically, it just shows that um looks like it ha is, has a positive ability to uh, instigate uh, mast cell activation um, as this morphine, but the rest of them, it's much less significant. Down here are the contrast. I should have highlighted these. These are the contrast dyes. Sorry, I can't see the mouse very well from where I am. So HVA, or hemorrhagic venom anaphylaxis, is the most common trigger of anaphylaxis in mastocytosis. Its prevalence is very high. It's between 1% to 7.9% of patients with clonal mast cell disorder. 
interesting. There's a very large predominance of male versus female. And these patients tend to have more cardiovascular vasodilatory symptoms and less so of the itching urticaria and the angioedema. Their baseline tryptase is also lower than patients in general uh, with HVA, I apologize for the typo, than other types of systemic mastocytosis. 90% of these patients actually also have an IG sensitization. And so there's been conversation about whether the threshold of what is deemed positive by specific IgE, serum IgEs, should be decreased from 0.34 down to 0.1. So cutaneous mastocytosis is uh, prevalent in children. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it's uh, characterized by urticaria pigmentosa, diffuse cutaneous mastocytosis, or solitary mastocytomas. It typically infiltrates, uh, it's typically consisting of infiltrates of mast cells in metafocal or diffuse patterns on skin biopsy. Um, and it typically resolves by adolescence. However, the 10% may be, uh, may develop uh, systemic mastocytosis. What's interesting is that the mutations in KIT tend to be actually on the extracellular domain rather than the, as we previously discussed, the catalytic ATP binding domains. Why should it get better? Is KIT good? Good question. <laughs> good question. <laughs> There's nothing in the literature to describe. You asked many good questions, Dr. Ullman. Unfortunately, I do not have any good answers for you. For this. So does the biopsy get better, or just the skin findings get better? Um, there's, it really wasn't discussed, like, if they were biopsying afterwards. And is there anything predictive for the ones that have systemic mastocytosis? Like? That also was not discussed in what I was reading. <clears throat> um, probably, I, my guess, though, if I were to hypothesize, is probably because of the it would be like the area of kid that's affected and maybe they have, they're, they have right. more less, diffused, yeah. Diffused to be right, and less uh, systemic symptoms. All right, so systemic mastocytosis um, is also relatively common, one to 10,000 to 20,000 adults. Um, about 80% of these patients have urticaria pigmentosa. This is a picture here of a child with a sign, which is when you scratch uh, the skin of a non-affected area and it develops a wheel and flare. And this is, um, characteristic image of an adult patient with uh, urticaria pigmentosa and how their parents of their rash. So the WHO um, consistently has been updating their guidelines with regards to um, how to diagnose systemic mastocytosis. And um, you can make the diagnosis with one major criteria and one minor criteria, or at least three minor criteria. But the major criteria um, basically is looking at the density of mast cell in uh, bone marrow and other organs, so it requires biopsy, most frequently bone marrow biopsy. Um, minor criteria is that you have A to P immature mast cells um, in the bone marrow or in other organs with um, consisting of greater than 25% of um, the amount of total cells in the, uh, whatever specimen you're looking at. You can detect the um, apoint mutation in kit, uh, mast cells and bone marrow, or, um, or other organs are demonstrating CD25 with or without CD2, in addition to normal mast cell markers. And the serum total tryptase is persistently above 20. So this is a picture of just demonstrating a, bas a bone marrow biopsy with severe um, infiltration of mast cell. So there's also other WHO criteria that are called the B and C findings. This includes um, basically describing organ involvement without dysfunction and the organ involvement with dysfunction. And as would be expected, the latter um, has much poor prognosis. This is a picture demonstrating uh, the osteolytic pathologic um, appearance of a patient with uh, bone infiltrates of mast cells. So um, this is a 
pretty prominent paper with regards to NASA related disease with clonality that was published uh, back in 2010, Jackie. Um, basically looked at patients with uh, clonal mast cell disease uh, without skin lesions and compared them to patients with skin lesions. They started with 83 patients and they had 51 that had clonal MCAD and 32 um, that did not. This was compared to 114 patients with um, indolent systemic mastocytosis and had skin findings. This is the patient table uh, describing their patient characteristics. Notably, as we discussed, most of these patients are male. They typically are actually in their about 40 versus those patients who um, do have skin findings are a little bit younger at 28. And as expected, most of them did not have pariahs. Also interestingly, the tryptase level is elevated but lower than those with skin findings, but higher than those with non-clonal MCAD disorders. So they also looked at what actually provocated um, symptoms. And insects was by far and away the most common um, issue for these patients without skin findings. And what's interesting is, is that um, with non-clonal, they have more issues with drugs and none of them reacted to food. <clears throat> um, again, like we discussed previously, those with clonal um, mast cells had more vasodilatory issues and those without had more skin symptoms as well as dyspnea. Um, this is just to summarize uh, the previous two slides. Um, of note, um, just wanted to point out again that uh, in women, drugs, no clone was more in women, drugs were a major trigger and the sum taste was a little lower. So this paper was uh, instrumental in coming up with the REMA scoring system for mast cell uh, disorders so that we can judge whether or not a patient needs a bone marrow biopsy. Uh, points are given for gender, if you're male, if you have absence of skin findings, um, more points if you have cardiovascular issues, and then if you have an elevated tryptase. It has a sensitivity of 92% and specificity of 81%. And if um, the patient has venom allergy, then the sensitivity is 92% and the sensitivity is 67%. There's a, yes, sir. <laughs> You call me sir, I keep looking around for my father. Anyway, um, you, you, now this is the same problem in the literature. Your normal was 11.4. Now some of these are 15, some are 25. Have they assigned mm -hmm. a number but this, yet? But this is because these are for- um, Staging. It's for, it's more for system of mastocytosis, not for the other phenomena. Okay, so the numbers are all different. No, no, have to live with that. Right, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I had a question. Um, in your literature search, did you find anything about um, like EDS and POTS with these patients? Um, not related. Hmm. I have a whole line on that. <laughs> Good question. There's a whole spectrum of disease of systemic mastocytosis. Um, I relied on a review that was generated uh, just a few months ago now, uh, basically talking about systemic mastocytosis and risk stratification. Um, starting with indolent systemic uh, mastocytosis, uh, basically these patients have a low burden of mast cells in their bone marrow. They have very few B findings and no C findings. Um, the KIT muta point mutation is less common than affected. As you can see, it's the most common. It's um, basically the population that was described in the Alvarez Grossi paper. Um, they tend to be a little younger at presentation. They have much better um, overall median survival and very low risk of transformation to more serious um, kinds of uh, disorders such as acute leukemia and um, aggressive systemic mast cell cytosis. So, uh, wait a second, back to the previous one. So they, they less commonly have the C-kit mutation or the KIT mutation. Yes. They have a different mutation or they have no defined mutation? 
No, nothing that's been established yet. Or they have a different mutation it's, that it wasn't discussed. So why do they have disease? We also don't know that. Either. <laughs> yeah. We don't know a lot of things about, about this. Um, smoldering systemic mastocytosis. Um, th these patients have two or greater B findings, less than 20% mast cells in the bone marrow. Uh, they don't have any organist function. And they have, um, even though they are relatively uncommon in the study with 17 patients, uh, because they had older presentation um, with more risk, uh, risk factors. It was demonstrated that 18% actually transformed to acute leukemia, and the median survival was significantly lower than an indolent systemic mastocytosis. Um, many of these patients also have an associated hematologic neoplasm. Um, in order to be diagnosed with this, you had to have a confirmed diagnosis by WHO criteria for an associated neoplasm. Um, these patients typically have a tryptase of greater than 200, um, specifically if they also have concurred AML, CML, and MDS. Um, this is relatively common, um, as I just briefly mentioned, oops, um, in 138 patients. Um, and Many of these have uh, eosinophilia, some actually are, this is actually my older set of slides. If you don't mind, I'm going to quickly switch because I believe that I opened up my wrong um, slide deck. I'm sorry guys. Now I have to deal with the wonderful mouse. All right. Okay. And then there's um, aggressive systemic mastocytosis, which um, is characterized by one or greater C finding. So they have um, organist function. This is much rare. Even though this study had uh, 41 patients, um, typically is not commonly seen, as we all have just experienced in our own professional practice. Um, more, over 40 of them have tryptases of greater than 200, and their median survival is only 41 months. <clears throat> Mast cell leukemias, um, they have a large mast cell burden within their bone marrow, and frequently greater than 10% of their circulating mast cells also are affected. Um, this is very rare with only 1% of the patients in this study. Um, and what they've actually discussed is that molecular diagnosis seems to be useful in establishing the prognosis. So if you have a mutation in ASL1, RUNCS1, or S. RSF2 that can tell us how severe your phenotype will be, but uh, that's still under just uh, consideration and research. And other risk factors um, are pretty straightforward, uh, basically demonstration of bone marrow disease, um, demonstration of bone and liver disease, uh, advanced age, and also increased plasma IL-2 alpha, uh, R alpha, and CD25 levels. These people actually, you said earlier, that these cells don't circulate, but in this disease, mm -hmm. that they, they do. have circulating pathologic mast cells. Yes, sir. And mast cell sarcomas, unfortunately, literature is not as descriptive, um, but there's no evidence of systemic symptoms. They're generally localized with destructive growth patterns, and they have high grade cytology, as it would be expect expected. It's just a summary of the diagnostic algorithm for systemic mastocytosis. Um, summarized here is the that basically uh, we're all dependent on the tryptase level, bone marrow biopsy, um, as well as molecular testing for the kit point mutation, and if the patient has eosinophilia, uh, to also send for the FIP1 L1 PDGFRA um, oncogene. He did oncogene. Um, unfortunately, there, uh, like discussed, there's a large 
large range of survival depending on what the patient, the kind of um, mastocytosis the patient has, as I also previously discussed, and strikingly, um, with the overall survival of mast cell leukemia only being two months, it quickly drops off. The blue line is basically uh, an age-normalized um, survival for the general population in the United States. So indolent systemic is a normal lifespan. Yes, sir. All right. So monitoring for cutaneous mesocytosis is annual CBCs, LFTs, and triptase. You want to uh, look for hepatomegaly or other organ involvement um, if the triptase exceeds 20. And then for systemic mesocytosis, it's similar, but you have to keep an eye for um, organ organopathy and uh, perform regular DEXA scans. <clears throat> In monoclonal mast cell activation syndrome, this has now become a WHO uh, verified um, disease. Uh, these patients do not have any sort of cutaneous involvement. Um, they usually have symptoms affecting two or more organ systems. And they typically have the, um, the CQ mutation. So um, recently, as in last month, and Jackie, there was a uh, work group um, report with regards to mast cell activation syndrome. It's very descriptive and very helpful. Basically, it says that in order to diagnose MCAS, you have to have recurrent episodic symptoms involving two or greater organ systems, um, atopic, no atopic disease, measure baseline and acute episodes of um, biologic mediator levels such as triptase. And using triptase, they want 20% plus two levels or higher during an episodic event. Per um, the Venom studies, triptase typically peaks at 30 to 90 minutes following symptom onset and decline with a half-life of about two hours. And so they recommend to obtain acute uh, samples with between 30 and two hours after onset. So um, they also report stated that MCAS patients should have symptoms improve with uh, medications that brought production or receptor binding of these um, associated affected biologic mediators, such as antihistamines, leukotriene receptor agonists, PDG2 and LTC4 inhibitors, omalizumab. Um, urine and methyl histamine has little utility as a biomarker for diagnosis unless PDGF2 is otherwise elevated. And other um, metabolites of PDG2 and LTC4 are currently being commercially developed. Platelet activating factor is difficult to ascertain, but um, especially in food anaphylaxis, but um, these uh, assays are currently being developed, and sphingosine one phosphate um, is unfortunately rapidly metabolized without a stable metabolite, so they can't really use it. And to address your question, Ramon, EDS and POTS may be present concurrently, but are not related to MCAS. Actually, the key thing often comes whether there's anything really wrong with these people or they're mm -hmm. just crazy uh, is the uh, trip taste level. So go back to the slide. <coughs> So that calculation turns out to be, you know, what kind of number are we really looking for? Is it above the 11.4? Not always. No? So no. Define what's that equation again? That's basically um, how high your elevation, the difference in your elevation should be if from baseline, from baseline to an acute episodic event. So it should be 1.2 times the baseline plus yes, sir. 2? Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, like the, the example you had at the beginning, I yes. think went from four to eleven. Yeah. So that I'll get I'll, I'll I'll get into that. Yeah. But that wasn't somebody with mast cell activation syndrome. That was mast cell activation syndrome. It was. It yes. Was. All right. You're uh, <laughs> stealing my thunder. Okay. Anyway, um, 
So this is basically the algorithm saying that you have elevation of one or more mast cell mediators, you have response to therapeutic interventions, you have peripheral blood or bone marrow mutation, um, or a buccal swab with um, copy number variants. We'll talk about that. And then if these are positive, then your primary MCAS or somatic or germline mutation, and then if negative, then you have an idiopathic MCAS. Um, this is a summary slide of the different marker levels in mast cell disorders um, because PDG2 really is only, uh, PGD2, so I apologize, um, is really only elevated in systemic mastocytosis. It's the only one really that's elevated in, in, with urinary and methylhistamine. Otherwise, um, basically looks like we have to uh, rely on using tryptase because none of the other markers are easily obtained or um, elevated. So um, hereditary alpha tristosemia has been much more commonly discussed in literature in, uh, amongst us um, as potential etiology of patients with MCAS-like symptoms or mast cell symptoms, I should. Say. Uh, this was a paper that was published in Nature Genetics in 2016 that described 96 subjects from 35 families with elevated tryptase levels without evidence of mast cell disease. Um, it's an autosomal dominant disease, and there's a copy number variation with gene dose relationship with TPSAB1. Uh, canonically, in the literature, it's described uh, to have increased um, beta alleles. Or, um, or increased alpha alleles. However, you, uh, it's been reported up to five alpha and one beta. Um, their clinical features are notable for um, all of them having a tryptase level of eight or greater. Um, they have flushing of paritis and they have um, venom sensitivity, as well as retained primary dentition. So yes, as to your earlier question, there are lots of tryptase levels we have to remember now. Um, so for the diagnosis to be considered, the patient should have an elevated tryptase of greater than eight. Um, but if you actually send for specific testing for the mature tryptase levels, those are normal. Um, you can send, uh, CNBs to be done by gene by gene, which costs $160 million, is done by DDPCR, which basically looks at uh, tiny little drop, molds and droplets of the patient's cells to de detect um, the number of amplicons, or uh, sorry, following uh, amplification to detect the number of copy numbers. Um, these patients have, um, Long been a priority to have severe anaphylaxis with venom allergy. However, more recently, there was a paper that described children with food allergy um, that may have issues with this as well. And it describes that if the baseline tryptase level is greater than 14.5, that this was a net positive predictive value and 90% of the patients uh, had severe anaphylaxis to food allergy. Uh, chronic urticaria with systemic symptoms um, their systemic, uh, sorry, their serum basal tryptase level was greater than 8.2. And if it was greater than 10, that means that their mean age score was actually nearly double with those with lower basal tryptase levels. Um, so going back to my cases, the first man was a 50 year old man with a pathologic fracture and elevated tryptase. Um, his RIMA score. Well, he's got, he's male, he doesn't have any skin findings, and his tryptase level was 90. So his total renal score was five, which indicates a biopsy. Can anybody tell me which systemic mastocytosis this patient has? Or does he have systemic mastocytosis? Yeah, systemic And he probably has aggressive, correct? Because he has a C finding. He's got a pathological fracture. My next case was a 42-year-old woman. Uh, the big thing here, like we're talking about, is her tryptase went up from baseline to 11. And initially when we saw her, we had a lot of doubt that this was real. Her, all her, we sent for LTE4 to for 
um, PG D2 levels, urine um, studies, and everything was negative. Uh, however, we sent her to see Mary Costell's and Brigham Women's, and she actually verified the patient did have mast cell, especially since she had um, such great improvement um, on optimal medical therapy. And now with our new algorithm, with um, this new equation, we see that her um, acute level did exceed the 6.8 that would be when calculated with her um, baseline level of four. Um, she also had episodic anaphylaxis involving two or more symptoms. She has symptom proven on mediator blockade, as well as no chronic ATP and negative bone marrow biopsy. And so this is consistent with MCAS. Third patient is a 16-year-old gen uh, gentleman with um, idiopathic anaphylaxis following exercise and at rest um, with mildly elevated uh, tryptase levels. So he actually has uh, four duplications of the alpha allele and um, his, he inherited this from his father. His father's tryptase level was 18.4, his brother's was 15.3, and they're both affected. His father's actually completely asymptomatic and his brother has a much uh, milder phenotype and is not on treatment. So he initially was on the full gamut, gamut of therapy and uh, recently was able to be titrated off of everything with exception of omoglosumab and is doing very well. Which brings me to talk about omolizumab for hereditary alvotryptosemia. Um, basically, I received a receipt, um, accepted draft of a letter to the editor for Jackie uh, that basically describes a small cohort of patients of 13 um, that basically all have um, hereditary alpha tryptosemia um, and looking at omolizumab in these patients retrospectively. Uh, they were on omolizumab for other conditions such as chronic urticaria or asthma. None of these patients had duplications in alpha uh, two to one, and uh, four of them had three to one. The median total serum Ig level was only maybe three, and the median basal tryptase level was 18. Um, Twelve of these patients had one or greater symptom improvement, six out of 13, half their symptoms between three and eight symptoms actually improved, one of which had no improvement, and so omalizumab was discontinued. Um, the median time for symptom improvement was eight weeks. Um, and the most commonly improved symptoms included urticaria, nausea, flushing, fatigue, and abdominal pain. And those symptoms that were completely unaffected included GI as well as more of the systemic issues. Why should omelizumab work in this condition? It's a mast cell stabilizer, so my presumption is, is that um, it's another way to antagonize the mast cells from activating on. Where is the data? I mean, we, we, we don't have this a. This is an anti IgE drug. What does it have to do with mast cell stabilization? Because IgE is involved in the activation of the mast cells. So, if um, even with um, kit um, activation. So, if you don't have the IgE activated, then if you don't have the. Um, a G receptor activated, then theoretically the muscles would be less um, prone to deranulate. Actually, somebody shown that, or is it just speculation? This is speculation. This is literally in press. Like, I literally, it's, I can't even find it on the yet. <laughs> so, just uh, again, a um, summary of all the tryptase levels. Yes? Can you go back? Yes, ma'am. So, so what do you follow? Clinical? Or, I mean, are you follow, follow clinical? Level? The, the elevated trapeze level is constitutively elevated at baseline. So, even if you change the, um, if you, if you are giving the patient a mast cell stabilizer, the, tri the basal tryptase <coughs> production of that um, pro tryptase will always be expressed. Why don't we use a drug that's known to be a mast cell stabilizer like chromoly? But that can't be um, reached systemically, and so that's the issue. Because you want to be able to reach all the tissues, and um, chromoly can't um, permeate past the GI tract or the epithelia if it's used intranasally or, or um, 
in the lungs. So you want a you want a systemic drug to to as a um, antagonist. Might help with local symptoms, GI right. symptoms. Right. Right. Which is why um, we still use all of that. Is this still a place where we should measure alpha tryptase? I mean, is it actually alpha and beta still commercially available? Um, I don't know about commercially available, but I do know that some, oh, I have to go back pretty far. Some of, um, in the literature, they, it can be beta that's more, that's elevated instead of the alpha, and that's the issue. Um, so, yeah. Um, for system of mastocytosis, they should have tryptase greater than 20. For MCAS, it's going to be dependent on their basal level and, uh, for their acute finding. Um, alpha tryptosemia, it's greater than 8. And an ARD with systemic uh, anaphylaxis, it should also be the same as with MCAS. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and word of the day. Have any of the um, mast cell classification used the other, looking at the other mast cell proteases? I mean, you've got kinase and carboxypeptidases. Right. Okay. Those have it, they're different in different sites, mucosal versus, right. um, but no one's. No one's it. really looked at that. And right, the production also changes depending on which tissue they're in. So if the mast cells in the skin versus the epithelium, a lot of times the expression of the protease, and it's um, because there's, I can't remember, I think there's like two or three kind, uh, specific lineages of mast cells. And so their phenotype also changes as well as their, what their granule products are. So, yes, sir. Since those of us who have to deal with the outside docs that think that ehlers danlos is associated with mast cell activation disorder in every patient. Right. If we do, how many repeats of tryptase levels that don't elevate do we have to tell them, don't worry about this? Um, that wasn't really established, but I think um, a good way to do it, at least with regards to what we were doing, what I've done before, is that we look at what the, ba do a basal level, and then in the acute setting, if, you know, a couple of times it's been drawn within 30, and two, two, 30 minutes to two hours, it's still has arisen, then you can say that the patient probably doesn't have. So you'd say two or three is enough instead of 10, which is what the patients want? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or more. Or more. Or more. What's the, do you know the ICD-10 code for uh, mast cell activation syndrome? No, I don't. But there is one, presumably. I presume, so, yes, there is one. There is I have seen it. I do more CBID than I do massive myself, so I apologize. <laughs> the, the, you had the patient in the resolution of the alopecia with the um, is that Has that been employed in other just, uh, primary cases of alopecia areata? Uh, that's yeah. the only case I've been able so to any find. speculation on a mechanism there? No. Was it for immediate release that was no longer occurring? Or? That's a really good question. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that described in literature otherwise as well. Because, yeah, when I presented this patient about six years ago at the college, I was, uh, and since then I've presented her sequentially a couple times um, as her progress has changed. And, um, yeah, I've been looking, you know, I go through the literature and look for it, and she's the only one that it's been described for. Sorry? No. No. I know that's yeah. No. She saw everybody but dermatology. I'm not sure she did. Yes. She was a great New Yorker. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs>